Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be giving you a declutter update. So recently I did a declutter on my makeup collection. I have two videos, which I will link down below. I went through my bronzers, blushes, and highlighters, and then my primers, foundations, and concealers. Now, amongst that were some products that I couldn't remember how they performed, so I put them to the side to test out and just get another feel for them and then decide whether or not I'm going to keep them or say bye-bye. So here are all the products that I've been testing. Here are some notes. So let's get into it and I will update you on all of this. Okay, so I think I need to get some kind of order going here. My notes are <laughs> all over the place. So let's start out with foundations. First up, I have the CoverGirl True Blend in the shade L1. Now I actually wore this today to test it out just one more time and look, it leaves a beautiful, natural, glowy finish, but the shade is a little off and it definitely oxidizes. I've worn this to work and when I go to the bathroom throughout the day, I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, why am I three shades more tan? I find that it's not super long lasting. It does get a little cracky throughout the day, like on my chin. So I'm not going to be keeping this one. Next, I have the Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid Foundation, and this is in the shade 02 Fair Porcelain. And I for sure thought I was going to get rid of this one, but I did wear it to work this week and oh, I'm a little bit shook. So I first thought that the shade was way too fair. It is 02 Fair Porcelain, which is an extremely fair shade, and it's great that Maybelline does go that fair, but I thought like, Mm -mm, I look way too washed out. But once I started using it again, you know, adding some color and life back into my skin, it's really not that dramatic. I like the shade. And it has a beautiful radiant finish. It is a sheer to medium coverage, which I have been getting into those type of foundations a bit more lately. So I'm excited to keep this one in my collection and get a bit more use out of it. Now, longevity wise, it's not extremely long lasting. It will get me through an eight to nine hour day. A little, little bit of cracking around the chin, but I don't mind that because it only happens towards the nine hour mark and that's a pretty long time. Next, I have the Inoxa Color Correcting Anti Redness Foundation and this is in the shade Porcelain. Now the pros for this foundation were that it's a really nice fair shade and it looked beautiful on the skin. It has a medium coverage, slightly glowy. It was really nice, but I'm not going to be keeping this one because the scent it is like so strong and chemical-like. I felt a little bit like Alexis M from Schitt's Creek. <laughs> but it is such a strong chemical scent. It's a bit too overpowering. It lasted okay, not as long as I would like though. It wasn't very sweat proof. It started to break up around my mustache, fade and crack a lot on my chin. So. I won't be keeping this one. Next, I have the Jouer Essential High Coverage Cream Foundation and oh my God, I can't believe I haven't used this for so long. The coverage of this is insane. Like you need the smallest amount and it is extremely full coverage. It's very lightweight though, so it doesn't feel thick or heavy on the skin. It reminds me of the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation, super full coverage and super lightweight. Now the shade of this one, I have Alabaster and it is a little bit light. So I did have to use a powder that was a little bit darker than I would normally use just to kind of even it out. But the finish of this foundation and the longevity, I'm gonna be keeping it. It does have a matte finish, but nothing too drying. I still got a little oily throughout the day on my nose, but I just tapped it with a tissue and it looked perfect underneath. I was really happy with the longevity. It lasted through a whole day at work with sweating and my normal carry-on. So I'll be keeping this one. The next foundation, I am absolutely, oh, like I am taken back by this foundation. This is the Kmart OXX Bloom Luminous Luxe Foundation. 
This, guys, is like a $7 foundation. Oh, and it's good. Okay, okay, let's start off with the shade. I have 1.1 Swan, which is a really good shade match for me. It's very, very fair. Now, the shade range as a whole is not good. There's like six shades, so disappointing, but I really don't expect that much from a Kmart branded makeup line. But anyway, this shade works for me. Now, I did use about three pumps in total and it gives a medium coverage, but the finish of this is beautiful. My skin looks so fresh and glowy. I can still see some blemishes underneath, but I love that it just looks so my skin but better. The foundation lasted really, really well. After about nine hours is when I started to get a little bit of cracking around my mouth. But like I said before, with the Dream Radiant Foundation, for nine hour wear, I'm happy if that's the only bad thing that is starting to happen because a lot of bad things can happen with foundations and a little bit of cracking doesn't bother me after nine hours. I just cannot believe for a super cheap, came up branded foundation how damn good this is so this oh, this ain't going anywhere next i have the colourpop no filter foundation now this is in the shade fair 05 i did find this one to be a little bit light for me it does have a matte finish and it lasts well on the skin but it was nothing extremely outstanding so i'm not going to be keeping this one in my collection next i have some concealers First up, let's start with the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter. I have this one in the shade 110. I just don't like this, hey? First things first, the shade is too fair. And I've mentioned this before, but with the Fenty Complexion products, I still can't find my perfect shade. With the fairest of the shades, good undertones, but too fair. So then when I went up a shade level, the undertones weren't right. So I just, I can't find my perfect shade match. This one is way too fair. And most of these concealers, I feel like I have a similar problem where I'm finding that when a concealer shade is too light, it just doesn't give me the coverage that I like. I find it's too stuck under the eyes and it can look rather thin and watery whereas when I use a concealer shade that matches my skin tone more it just looks a lot more healthy and fresh and I don't look like I'm dying <laughs> but anyway the Fenty concealer was a no from me so that one is going same kind of deal with this revolution conceal and hydrate concealer this is in the shade 0 C 0 0.2 and this one is just way too light and the undertone is a bit too yellow for me. So again, it just looks thin. It just doesn't look right. So this one is also going. This concealer here by Mecca Max is the Life Proof Cream Concealer. It's in the shade Porcelain 0.5. I don't have much of this left, so I thought I would just use it up. But when I did use it, again, way too light too thin and watery. I just don't like the coverage of this one, so it's going. Next, I have the Essence Camouflage Plus Matte Concealer. This is in the shade 10 Light Rose. Same deal, too light, it's going. Another concealer by Essence, this is just the Camouflage Full Coverage Concealer. This is in the shade 05 Ivory. Now, I'm not sure if they still sell this one, but I preferred this way better than the other Essence concealer. The shade isn't as fair, so I like it much more. So I'm going to be keeping this one. There's really not much left, so I just want to use it up anyway. And then the last concealer is the Inoxa Dark Circles Concealer in the shade Porcelain. Now, this shade is a bit deep so that is why I like it. It has a medium coverage and a little bit of a peachy undertone, so it does a bit of color correcting while I'm at it. It's not something I would purchase again, but I am going to use it up because it's an all right formula. Oh, actually, I found one more concealer. This is the L'Oreal True Match in the shade 1N. When I first bought this, I thought it was too dark because I was really into the bright, bright concealers. But after trying this one out again, I really like it. The shade is good. It matches my skin tone more and it's a 
more of a medium coverage so if you prefer something that's a bit more lightweight and glowy then you'll really like this so that means i'm going to be keeping it okay <laughs> all right let me jump into a few random things in here i have the tatcha silk canvas primer and this is just a little sample i got in one of those like christmas sample packs they do at christmas time wow <laughs> I don't like this. This is extremely raved about, but I just don't think it's for my skin type. Maybe if you're a bit more oily, like I, I, I don't know. If you use this and love it, what is your skin type? Because I found when I applied it to my porous areas, it just, it didn't blend into the skin. It just sat on top. So my foundation didn't blend very nicely over it. I don't know, just not a fan, so that one's going. Next, I have this NYX blush in the shade Taupe. And I originally had this in my collection as a contour shade because it was like really popular back in the day. But I thought I would try using it as an eyeshadow. Every day when I do my makeup, I like to put a little bit of a shadow on the lower lash line. So I was using this, but it's just a bit too cool. It kind of makes me look really tired. So I definitely prefer something with a little bit of warmth for under the lower lash line. So I'm going to get rid of this. Next, I have this blush by BYS and it is just called the Marble Blush. Now in the pan, it looks way too dark for me, but it's not as pigmented as it looks when you're putting it on the skin. It does have a little bit of a sheen to it, but to be honest, it's not really my preferred shade and it's nothing too special, so I'm not going to be keeping this. Next, I have the Rimmel Insta Duo Contour Stick in the shade Light. One side is a bronzer and one side is a highlighter. Now, I'm pretty sure in my original declutter video, I said I was getting rid of this, but then... But then I remember reading a comment from a subscriber saying how much she actually enjoys this product and she's very fair as well. So I thought I would give it another go and look, my feelings went real with this one. So I applied it by using a brush, wiping it onto the product and then blending it onto the cheeks and look, it worked really well. It was creamy and smooth, blended really easy. It was buildable, really nice. But I found that the shade was still a little bit off for my liking, just a tad too warm. And then I also found that with certain foundations, it did lift up the product. So it lifted up the foundation underneath and I'm just not here for that. I also found that once I put powder on top, the shade really, really faded. So I then had to go over the top with a powder bronzer. So I'm not going to be keeping this in my collection, but I think it would be good if you don't use a powder, you just like cream products, and you do go for more of a lightweight kind of makeup look. I think you'll really like this, but for me, it just didn't work out. I did compare it to my Fenty cream bronzer and I would just rather spend the money on the Fenty one because I know that it works really, really well. So this one, I had a big chunk of notes about it because I was real up and down, but in the end, I decided that I'm not going to keep it. A bronzer that I fell in love with after trying it out again is this ColourPop Pressed Powder Bronzer in the shade Private Party. Oh, <sighs> that was a lot of peas. <laughs> Now, when I first took this out for testing, I thought that the shade was going to be a bit too dark, but I'm wearing it today and I'm loving the shade. What I love most about this is that it leaves a really beautiful sheen to the skin. So it's not an overly glowy, glittery bronzer. It just has that perfect amount that gives a really nice natural glow and oh my God, I love that in a bronzer. So I have definitely fallen in love with this. It ain't going anywhere except back into my drawer. I freaking love it. A bronzer that I have decided to get rid of is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. And this is in the shade Light Bronzer. Now I have heard that the next shade up is actually much better for fair skin. So I might purchase that in the future because it is a beautiful formula. It is 
so creamy and silky to touch. It looks beautiful on the skin, but the shade just pulls way too orange on me, so I'm not going to keep it. Next, I have the Designer Brands Brilliant Skin Blush and Illuminator Duo, and this is in the shade Rosy Glow. Now, testing this out again, it was nice. The blush is a really nice shade, it works well for me, blends easily. The highlighter, same deal, but it just wasn't anything to rave about. I do think it's a good product, but I don't need it in my collection, so I'm going to pass it on because I think someone else could get better use out of it than me because I do have so many other blush and highlighter options. And lastly, I have six highlighters to talk about. First up is this e.l.f. Jelly Highlighter in the shade Bubbly. Look, I don't know what the hell this is. It's just weird, okay? Like, obviously the texture of it is like cool. You're like, wow, a jelly highlighter. Oh my God, it wobbles. <laughs> but like, it's just not good, okay? It's so metallic, so metallic. Like too metallic to use. I put a little bit in the lid and then used a brush to lightly tap and it just too much. And then it dries down so quickly that you can't blend it out. It's like shit, well I'm in a pickle now, aren't I? So I am getting rid of that one. Like, I don't know what that's about. Next is the Essence So Glow Cream to Powder Highlight. And this is in the shade Look on the Bright Side. Now this is not that bad. Like it's a really nice formula, the cream to powder. I don't think it turns that much into a powder, but it does leave a nice glowy, fresh look to the skin. The shade looks white in the pan, but it does have a bit of a gold tint to it. It is very beautiful, but I found that it's just a bit too light for me. And I don't think they sell this anymore. I have also had this for like <sighs> way too long. So it's probably well and truly expired. So this one is gonna go. Next, I have the Models Prefer Luminous Luxe Highlighter, and this is in the shade Halo. Now this one I was actually quite torn on because it's a beautiful shade. If I go in with a light hand, it looks really pretty, but it is just a bit too glittery and metallic for my liking. I do have to be careful and make sure I go in with a light hand and look, I just want to go in and make it work. I don't want to be like, yeah, shit, you know? <laughs> so although I think this is a beautiful shade for my skin tone, the formula just isn't quite there for me, so I'm going to pass this on. Next, I have this highlighter by Milani. I'm not sure what it's called because there's like a lot of different words on the back. We've got the Afterglow Strobe Light Instant Glow Powder. And it's in the shade 01. I don't know. But anyway, I did not like this. The shade is a bit too pink toned for me. And as you're hearing a lot over my last couple of videos, I don't like a pink toned highlighter. It's very bright and stark for my skin tone. I also found this one to really accentuate my pores. So on my cheekbones, it just looked too metallic and my pores looked really big. So this one's going. Next, I have the ColourPop Pressed Powder Highlighter in the shade Here Kitty Kitty. And this, like, I'm still unsure about it because I really, really love the shade. It does have a metallic finish, but I just, I'm not like, wow about it, you know? But for some reason, I don't want to get rid of it. I'm going to keep it and I'm just going to keep using it because I, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of feel the same about the next highlighter. This is the BYS Diamond Highlighter in the shade Energy. And in the pan, the shade looks like it wouldn't work for me because it's like, it's yellow. But I'm wearing it today and it leaves a really nice glow. I like how it blends into the skin. It doesn't accentuate my pores. I need a mirror. I feel like it looks really pretty and leaves a beautiful glow, nothing too metallic. So I also think I'm going to keep this one because yeah, I just, I'm not ready to let it go yet. All right, well that 
is everything. I hope you enjoyed watching me declutter some more makeup today. It feels so good to get rid of it all. If you haven't seen my other declutter videos, make sure you go and watch them. I will have them linked in the description box below. I also have an entire playlist dedicated to cleaning, organizing, and decluttering my makeup room. So if you wanna go on a little bit of a binge, I've got you. All right, well that is all from me today. If you aren't already, make sure you go and follow me over on Instagram and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already because I would love to have you here. I hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.